Namaste everyone, welcome back to Delhi. I'm back here from Jaipur, which was a very interesting experience. I had a bit of food poisoning, but I'm better now. And I'm back in the big city of Delhi. And as usual, yes, it is absolute chaos. And I'm in an area called Chauri Bazaar. And I want to talk to you today about a very specific topic. The topic that I want to talk to you about today is safety. Is India a safe place to visit? Is it safe to explore? Are you safe on the streets? So these are some of the topics we could discuss. And the area I'm in at the moment, Chauri Bazaar, is not far from Chantni Chauk at all. It's only one metro stop away. And yeah, certainly very busy. Lots of markets, lots of people, lots of activity, and of course, lots of traffic. The traffic is definitely something to get used to. Hello, sir. Namaste. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, what have we got here? More businesses, a lot of motorcycles. And yeah, all, and also a lot of wires, which is common here in Asia, places such as Bangkok as well. So when we talk safety in any place, you need to take into account things like population, things like geography. So obviously India, 1.4 billion people, and it's quite a big country. And when I'll say, I'll talk about safety, I can only really talk about Delhi, Agra and Jaipur. The golden triangle that I've done. I can't talk about the rest of the country. Yo, certainly I'm not sure if that is safe from an electric perspective. Just look at that. But somehow it works. So let's start our safety vlog and I will talk about traffic. Yes, I think your chances of getting run over in Delhi specifically is higher than average. The traffic is really, really insane. Luckily or unluckily, depending on how you view it, there's a lot of honking and you won't fall asleep in traffic, that is for sure. So you won't necessarily be caught off guard. You'll get a warning. Oh, no, just squeeze through here. Look at this absolute chaos. Hello guys, how are you? Look at this in terms of traffic. So I would say definitely traffic and traffic safety is probably your main concern when you come to India. It really takes a lot of time to get used to this. And sometimes you get a break like this. See, there's no traffic. Too much traffic. India, India, India. India. <laughs> Cheers guys. I think they are used to it. When you visit big cities in India, such as Delhi, I would absolutely encourage you to take things slow. Don't rush, because in traffic like this, once you start getting rushed and you want to go places very quickly, you might lose concentration. And it's when you lose concentration that you're at risk of getting hit. Yeah, the pavements are not always the best options either. But sometimes there's not a lot of people and you can use it. You see many people actually walk in the street and it might be frowned upon in other countries. But maybe that is not a bad option. Especially if you go against the traffic. Because then you can see traffic approaching you and you can move out of the way. But yeah, so traffic, I would say, is the number one thing you need to concern yourself in terms of safety in Delhi. Let's talk about food. So obviously in India, you have lots of street food that you can eat and that you can devour. Would I recommend the street food? Well, if you asked me maybe a week ago, I would have said yes. Go for it, it's cheap, it's nice, it's flavorful. However, maybe that was a little bit arrogant and short-sighted from me because I did get food poisoning in Jaipur. And it was the worst I've ever felt in all my years of traveling. Well, there's gonna be no way for a year. 
Let's just go through here. I really don't know what it was that caused the food poisoning. If it was something I ate, it was something I drank. Not to bore you with the details, but I fainted twice. Once I woke up and I was on the floor of a bathroom. And the second time I woke up, I was on the floor in my bedroom. So that was not very nice. And I was sweating a lot. And I had a temperature. So a horrible, horrible experience in Jaipur. So if you ask me now, what about the food? Is it safe? I'll have mixed opinions. I would say stick to reputable food sources. And that's very difficult to necessarily nail down because you don't know what cooking methods the different vendors use. Often they might just use bad water and they don't cook it properly. Hello sir, how are you? Hello sir, hello, hello. Hello, you see. hello, namaste Hi. brother, how are you? Namaste. Good, good. Hi. Obviously the street food will be very tempting because it's cheap and it's affordable. But I would say guys, if your stomach certainly can't handle spicy food, and I think I fall into that category, think twice, rather go to a reputable restaurant or if you must a western brand hello sir how are you namaste namaste okay sir here very good very good you like india yeah delhi is nice city man thank you thank you very much how are you how are you sir yes oh yes namaste danyavad <laughs> thank you guys thank you very much yeah guys you can see there's lots of food options here and usually I'd say a good indication of hygiene is if a lot of locals eat there. But here in India, that might be a false alarm because their immunity, their immune system or their constitution, they might be used to the food and you're not. So stick to Western brands if you must. Go to Costa or KFC and certainly take it easy allow yourself to settle into the food culture first so yes not to discourage you completely from experimenting with food here in india but do take care take good precautions pack your imodium as well and yeah just more on my own experience of food poisoning i've never had food poisoning before until i came to india absolutely don't take chances with street food if you've got a feeling that the hygiene is not up to standard and I can't really tell you what to look out for but if the oil for example looks a little bit dodgy I'd stay away from the place if you spot any behavior like people stirring food with their fingers or hands or like milk or whatever, then absolutely, of course, that is a no-go. No-go place. Hello, guys. How are you? How are you? I'd say that if you are going to eat fruit and veg on the street... Yeah, you don't have to honk, man. I'd say that if you are going to eat fruit and veg on the street, absolutely peel it. Peel the apples, peel the pears. And you can see a lot of Indian people, they eat food here from the tin foil cups you can see like this chap over here and the queue here but remember their constitution their immune system they used to this food you might not necessarily be used to this hello brother how are you and you can see lots of rickshaws as well people getting transported it's a lot less busy in this particular street here in Chauri Bazaar but yes there's still a lot of street food stalls and places to visit sometimes it's nice just to do a bit of people watching and traffic watching as I said earlier 
The worst thing you can do in Delhi is rush and be in a rushed state because then you're going to make bad decisions. Then you're going to be more prone to be hit by traffic. Take some good time to look behind you occasionally as well and take a break. Always take a break here and there and stay hydrated. Sorry, brother. Take a break now and again and stay hydrated. Drink lots of water. And on the water, make sure the water bottle is properly sealed when you buy it. Sometimes a lot of vendors, they sell water bottles with fake labels. That's at least what I've heard. All right, guys, we've covered traffic and we've covered food. Let's cover scammers and pickpockets. Here in Delhi, in India, yes, there are scammers and yes, there are pickpockets, but it's important to remember that they are not representative of the Indian people. The Indian people are honest and kind. And the scammers, they are just chances. So certainly some people might approach you, want to sell you some services at a very much inflated price to go on a tuk-tuk tour or a tour of the main site and you can usually spot them quite easily in my view remember if something sounds expensive to you it probably is expensive trust your instinct trust your gut there i would absolutely say it's worth it to do a bit of research first your own research on how much things cost how much the entrance fee to the red fort is or other major attractions and then you can figure out for yourself what you want and how you want to go about it and also remember if you carry your belongings with you carry them on you and in front of you like i've done here always walk confidently as well if in doubt put your nose slightly up and have a confident demeanor a confident appearance and yes be confident but there's a difference between confidence and arrogance don't be arrogant smile and yes hello guys how are you very good and be friendly to the people because the people in india are very very friendly allow yourself to engage with them if you allow yourself to engage with him, it will be a fascinating cultural experience. But always keep your belongings with you, on you, and in your pockets, as few Hello. items as you possibly can. Hello brother, how are you? How are you? Good, good. Hello guys, how are you? There you go. So there's always friendly people around you. If you're confident, if you walk tall, if you've got a good posture, if you've got a good demeanor, then people will not have any issue with you. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. Hello, sir. How are you? Yes, yes, squeeze through. Hello, sir. How are you? You can see how friendly the people in India are. They are very, very friendly. Hello, sir. If you smile, they will smile. If you allow them to pass, they'll be good friends of you. So, yeah, from that perspective, guys, physical safety there's an art and a science I guess so yes in terms of physical safety in terms of physical safety I have not felt unsafe at all here in India not for a single moment and I can honestly say that but remember that I'm a very experienced traveler and I'm also a man so I can look after myself and I'm a confident traveler what I'm trying to say there is not everyone will necessarily feel safe here in India <laughs> so I can't speak for everyone unfortunately certainly if I was still an inexperienced traveler I might be overwhelmed just by the sheer number of people here in India. But if you follow the basic rules that I told you about appearing confident and walking straight and upright, no slightly in the air if you must, 
then you'll be fine. The most important thing is to be friendly and to smile. It is when you start looking unsure of yourself and you don't smile and you don't appear confident, that's when people like the scammers and the pickpockets, they might identify you as a target that they want to pursue. So don't become that target. And also, I guess this might be a little bit controversial. But this is just a feeling that I've got in terms of a general vibe here. But I'm not sure how safe solo female travelers will be in India. I think that might be a little bit more tricky. Hi. Hello guys, Hi. how are you? Hello sir, hello. Hi guys, how are you? So for all my solo female traveler friends, for those who have been to India, let me know of your experiences. Did you feel safe here? Because I can certainly see a lot more challenges. For starters, let me tell you that there is not a lot of women on the streets here in Delhi. It's mostly men. So from that perspective, women might feel more intimidated. Hello, hello. So yes, if you are a solo female traveler and you've been to India on your own, let me know how you got on. Because it's just a feeling I have that it might be a little bit more tricky for women to travel in India. It's just based on instinct. I'm just going on my gut feel here. I've got no evidence to back that up, so let me know your experience in the comments, please. I'm just taking some time to see what these guys sell here. Different types of screws and nuts. And wow, some uh, wheels here for skateboards and various other stuff here. Wow. Hello, sir. Hello, hello. Wow, they uh, looks like some workshop of some kind, but they're all selling these wheels. Hello, sir. Yes, yeah, so I guess wheels for skateboards or rickshaws or wheelbarrows, that would be in the mania. Hello sir, how are you? He's for skateboard. Skateboard, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'd say bananas and these wheels are very prominent items for sale here in Chauri Bazaar. Hello sir, what is this? Is this for skateboard? For skateboard? These wheels. Ah, oh, and you've got the bigger wheel over there. Very nice, all different sizes. Yeah, so for some reason, this is very popular here in Chowri Bazaar. Hello, sir. Namaste, namaste. And here you could see more locks and door handles. Gosh, yeah, just <laughs> so much for sale. There's people uh, getting ready to paint somewhere. Oh, things. Hello, Namaste, sir. How are you? Good, good. Danyavad. Yes, yeah, and more household tools there. Hello, sir. Namaste. Taps. Yeah, gosh. I guess if you're interested in technical things, this will be something that will really be of interest to you. This part of Delhi. Yeah, sometimes I think they're just causing these traffic jams because they can. There needs to be a little bit more law and order perhaps in the city. Maybe that's something they can think about. But anyway, who am I to say? And yeah everyone, this is just a general rule about solo traveling in general. Because I know some of you might be a little afraid to embark on a solo adventure you might not necessarily know where to start so not necessarily talking about India here yeah, but places in general I would say just go for it and remember the golden rule and this golden rule is something that will change the way you think about traveling I'm a strong believer in what I'm gonna to say to you now I believe 
The number of good people always outweigh the number of bad people, regardless of where you are in the world. So if it's India, or Thailand, or anywhere else, you go and you want to go there, but you worry about safety. Remember that in general, people are good, people are honest. And I can honestly say, that's the same in India. Yes, there are bad apples everywhere. There are bad people, there are scammers, there are pickpockets, but they are the minority. The Indian people in general are kind and friendly and they will show you a good time. So when you are doubting yourself on whether or not you could travel on your own, whether or not you could be a solo traveler, well, you have to start somewhere but also remember that the number of good people will always outweigh the number of bad people. And once you start traveling on your own, and once you start experiencing places outside your comfort zone, you will want to do this more and more. It is absolutely something that is extremely fulfilling. It teaches you about the world and it teaches you about yourself. It is the best type of education that you can wish for. A cultural education. So alright everyone, we've talked a little bit about safety here in India. And I guess focusing specifically on Delhi, but certainly I can also extrapolate that to Places such as Agra and Jaipur, of course, they are smaller cities, but nonetheless, yeah, they still have their own challenges. Will I recommend it? Will I return to India? Well, I'll have to see. First, I'll see how the videos do on YouTube. Do will they get enough views? Will I be able to afford coming back? Yeah, I think this dog has got the right idea. Do a bit of traffic watching and people watching. Take a bit of a break here in the sweltering daily heat. Alright guys, I think this is where I'll end this video. We talked a little bit about safety in India. We talked about traffic, food, pickpockets and scammers. And whether or not female travelers will find it safe here in India. If you haven't done it yet, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel. And leave a comment for me in the comment section, I'd love to hear from you. But for now, I just want to say again, thanks for watching my videos. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers, take it easy.